In the Lab, a Texans podcast that takes a different look at things. Drew Doherty and John Harris have their lab coats and goggles on and the Bunsen burners burning. Here's Drew. In the lab time on a very short week for the Houston Texans, but it's Tuesday, so it's in the lab day, and it's uh, me and John Harris doing his Thor fists there. Johnny, great to see you, my friend, as always, and let's jump right into it. We're not really even going to talk about Cleveland. Let's talk about Davis Mills and what he's got to do against the Panthers, but let's do it how we do in winnow, winnow, winnow down even deeper and examine what really changes about the offense with Davis Mills? Because, yeah, I know they don't change much, they say, but you're not giving him the same package to run that you gave Tyrod Taylor, and they basically said as much on Tuesday in the press conferences. So what are maybe two or three key things that the Texans can do to help make it easier on Davis Mills to put him in a more advantageous position to succeed? Because we've seen them – all through the years do things like this, whether it was Bill yep. O'Brien and Deshaun Watson or whether it was Gary Kubiak and TJ Yates. Coaches adjust for rookies. How do they adjust for this rookie in Davis Mills who can do some things? Well, I think the, the first thing to realize, the, the difference in the, the quote-unquote packages, I don't know if there would be too much in the, you know, the, the play-action game and just a straight drop game. I think that's going to be pretty – I don't want to say pretty standard, but I think that's going to be – um, and package the was same. the wrong package was the wrong choice of words on my part. No, no, it's the right. Not, on the whole, the right. like, what do they do differently? You know? Like, no, I, I know you're absolutely right because I do think that there are probably you know if you think about like you know going to the grocery store, you know Tyrod's got his bag of groceries and Davis has got his bag. Now there's a lot of things that are the same, but Davis pulls out. Wait, I got kumquats and Tyrod pulls out. Well, I got Sour Patch Kids. So yeah, there are a couple of items that are going to be different. I think you you definitely hit on it. I think the one thing that's going to be interesting to me is the RPO package that the Texans had with Tyrod was, I think, one of the better things that they're doing. And they would put – and they did put defenses, both the Jaguars and the Browns, in peril. Like, man, how do we handle this? What do we do? And that got him some easy throws to flip out the Farrell Brown. You got Brandy Cooks down the sideline wide open. One uh, can't remember if that was Jag, that might have been a Jags game. But either way, that RPO package put defenses in conflict. So the question becomes, how does Davis do that? Well, honestly, you could run that same RPO package with Davis. Davis is not a tree sloth. He's not the slowest guy, guy on the field. Yeah, the guy can he's, move. At, he's athletic. He's just not Tyrod. I mean, that's, that's, you know, that's a different level of, of movement skills uh, and experience. But I do think you can run some of the, the same RPO type things, and you're going to have to do that against the Panthers. This is one of the fastest defenses in, uh, that I've seen, that I've studied. I don't know that I've seen a lot faster defenses in the league. I mean, they're number one in every single category on defense for a reason because they can all fly. And the best way or one of the best ways to attack a defense that fast, two ways, number one, counter their aggression. So a lot of counters, you know, bootlegs, things like that, but also make them think, oh, this is option football. Who's got what? I got the quarterback. You got the guy in the flat. I got the running back. If you get them to slow down and think a little bit, that's going to help you. And so I don't want them to go totally away from that RPO package. I really don't, because I think that can help who's ever at quarterback, whether it's me or you or Tyrod or Davis. It can help whomever because it makes them stop and think. The last thing you want these guys doing is having a dead 100% read on, I know what this play is. I'm, or I don't, I'm assuming this is past. I'm going 100 miles an hour. Because Brian Burns and Hassan Reddick are going to get in the backfield faster than any two pass rushers we've seen this year or any other year. These guys are dynamic. So that's saying something. Make sure that's saying something compared to is. what you just it saw is. in Cleveland. They well, they're different from those two guys. You know, Miles Garrett's two sixty five, and Jadeveon Clowney's two seventy. Now he did look trimmer, but they're both about two sixty two sixty five. They've got a mix of power to go along with their twitch. These two guys are just flat speed guys 
Now, they've got pretty good repertoire of pass rush skills, that especially Burns 53. Mm. But Hassan Reddick, over the last 17 games, has 15 and a half sacks. That's wow. the most in the NFL, and people don't realize that. And he had a sack and a half the other day uh, against the Saints. He had a sack and a half against the Jets. He has three through two games. Burns can go one-on-one and a spin move, chops, you know, uh, cross chops, uh, swipe, rip, just rip. I mean, he's got every move in the book. So the Texans are going to have to move Davis. So I think that RPO package is nice, but they're also going to have to make sure – that those two guys don't wreck the game and that they protect Davis so that he gets comfortable in the pocket. Not to the point where he's back there just bouncing like, okay, he needs eight seconds of time. No, they just got to make him feel comfortable enough that he can deliver the ball on time to his receivers. But this defensive line, these linebackers, they don't make that easy because of the speed and explosiveness and twitch that they have. When the Texans play a primetime game, I – after doing all my work and stuff, come home. Uh, This one's going to be even later because you and I are shooting Texans extra points that night. But I come home after a primetime game and I make a fried egg sandwich on toast with two slices of American cheese and a little bit of Tony Shasheries and I drink a beer. What do you do after you get home from a Texans primetime game that's at home? I'll give you one of my favorite stories. I don't, uh, th- this, it obviously is not going to happen this Thursday, but it's one of my favorite moments. Christmas Eve night, 2016. That was fun. We beat the Bengals. Randy Bullock pushes the field goal to the right. It's Christmas Eve night. Mm-hmm. And I eventually got home. Clinched, know, got your, you clinched your playoff spot. Yeah, I clinched the playoff spot. And it was, I don't know, it was pro- – now, that game was not at seven. I don't remember – I thought it was a little bit earlier in the day, but either way, got home pretty late and it's Christmas night. So, of course, even though with older kids are excited about Christmas, they were both asleep. And I came home and we were kind of finishing up, you know, everything. And we finally just had a moment, probably about midnight, uh, maybe later now, about 12, 30, one o'clock in the morning and just sat. On, I sat on the couch and my wife started to kind of fall asleep on the couch, kind of laying one way. I was sitting the other way. And I watched the replay of the game with the fire on until we both kind of both fell asleep about 2 33 o'clock in the morning. That's one of my favorite after game moments was that it was just kind of, if I was quiet, yeah. um, you know, you could celebrate Christmas the next day without having to worry about what was going to happen in Tennessee the next weekend. You could just kind of have a moment to breathe and relax. Uh, and that was a good one. Most of the time when I get home, I do the same thing. It's funny because that sandwich you just described is exactly, I didn't use Tony Shastri's. I use um, another guy um, that, that does YouTube videos called meat, uh, meat church, meat church, barbecue, Matt. He has a, he has a line of seasonings and one of them is called Holy Voodoo. I put the Holy Voodoo on that same egg sandwich that my son loves. He absolutely (laughs) loves it. So uh, it's funny you say that. So a lot of times, uh, jacks up and so we'll have something to eat sometimes we order something we just kind of sit there and you know maybe watch a marvel movie or watch him watch a show together and um you know he kind of watches it and i kind of do my notes and write some stuff up so it's always great after a night game especially if you come home with the w come home with the l eh, not as know. nice not as nice, not as nice. Hoping for a w hoping for a tasty egg sandwich fried egg sandwich after a texans victory and John, it's always good talking in the lab with yeah, you. Man. Can't wait to see you again very, very soon. Until then, go Texans. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to know when we post new content.